the first uh, long talk will be given by Stefan Monnier on resizing prop down to one axiom. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know how, how long I can make it. I, I'll do my best. But, uh, okay, so I'm going to talk about impredictivity. And I, I assume that most, if not all of you, know already what impredictivity is, so I'm going to skip this part. I just want to say a little bit of why I care about it. Um, I, fundamentally, I don't really care about it, but I'm working on a, a low-level Cochlai calculus as a, for a target for, for, for a compiler, and I, I end up using impredictivity in, in various ways. Uh, for example, to encode modules into tuples where the modules can hold uh, level polymorphic definitions. Um, I use it to, to type the output of closure conversion. And, well, I guess uh, I have to admit that to some extent I, I would like this low level language to be a, a strict superset of system F, although there's no really good reason for that. Uh, anyway, existing forms of impredictivity are, are, don't quite cover my needs, and so I've been kind of looking around. Okay, so what are the, the forms of impredictivity out there? There are various, and uh, I, I don't list them all by, by any means here. But the main ones are, are basically the, the one used in Coq, where you have the bottom universe uh, that is made impredictive. Then you have the one where you have uh, resizing axioms that are used. Uh, this is, uh, was popularized by Vorobatsky. And uh, the, main, the most uh, famous one is, uh, is propositional resizing. And then, of course, we have type in type, uh, which uh, at least this one is known not to be consistent. And, uh, and the bottom one I have there is the one I'm actually using. And uh, I, I don't know it to be inconsistent yet, but anyway. So the one that, that I'm using is, of course, the one I'm interested in, but that's not the one I'm going to talk about today. Uh, instead, I'm going to, to see you know, how, how does uh, hot propositional resizing compare to prop. So, uh, just before we go any further, I would like to have some idea of, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't, you know, not whether you, you believe in, uh, in predictivity or not, but rather, uh, do you think that prop is equivalent to the resizing axiom? One says yes. Who says no? Oh, damn, I need to change my conclusion. <laughs> okay, well, in any case, uh, proof by by popular vote is not, is not an accepted proof technique. So I'm, I'm going to try to do something a bit more constructive, let's say. Uh, so I'm going to start with a, a basic uh, predicative calculus I call here PCC omega. So it's just a, a, pure, type systems, a pure type system with just the, the usual hierarchy of, uh, of universes, fully predicative. And on the one side, I'm going to extend it uh, or basically extended by redefining the bottom universe as, as an impredictive universe, so adding impredictivity to the bottom universe, which gives me pretty much the standard CC omega. And then on the other side, I'm going to start again from PCC omega, and instead of adding, of making the bottom universe impredictive, I'm going to add uh, some form of resizing axiom. So those resizing axioms are not exactly the same as uh, uh, Hart's uh, propositional resizing, but they're, they're related. They basically conflate propositional truncation with uh, propositional resizing. It's actually not, anyway. Uh, so uh, what you see at the top with those uh, double bars uh, is pronounced erased. So that's my, my uh, erasure that brings a type down to type zero, <coughs> to the bottom universe. Uh, I have the corresponding constructor, which I pr pronounce erase. Uh, which constructs values that are erased. And then I have bind, which, lets, which is the, the corresponding eliminator. I call it bind because it forms a monad. So this is uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, if we try to use it, let's see if we can compile RCC omega terms to ICC omega. And this is actually very easy because we can provide definitions for our axioms in, uh, in ICC omega. So we can define the erasure as just being a kind of double negation, and you know, the, the actual uh, erased term are, are come very naturally. And even uh, it, it also satisfies the better reduction rule, so we, we're pretty happy here. Going the other direction is, uh, is the more interesting side. So here I'm going to use 
uh, a type preserving encoding that I write uh, brackets to, to encode my ICC omega terms into RCC omega terms. And of course, the, the, the core problem is how to, how to translate in predicative functions, which you know, in ICC omega, they naturally belong to type zero, but in RCC omega, they, they would naturally go, belong to, to type, to some higher type uh, L. And so to bring them down to pi type zero, I basically erase those impredicative functions. And so the, the encoding of an impredicative arrow is going to be the erased encoding of, of the arrow. And since we have to do this for impredicative arrows, we basically end up doing it for all terms in type zero, uh, basically like Cog does for, for its uh, bottom universe. So here's a first attempt at, uh, at writing this encoding function. So we see uh, for, for, for the arrow type, depending on whether the arrow type is in the bottom, in the type zero universe or not, we're going to just translate it as a normal arrow or as a normal arrow that's then erased. Uh, same thing for the lambda. Uh, if, if the lambda belongs to the type zero universe, we actually erase it and otherwise we don't. And for the application, since uh, if E1 belongs to the type zero uh, universe, it has been erased, that means we first need to use bind in, actually to, in, in order to be able to, to kind of call the function. And this then requires that the, the output of this function be itself erased, uh, which should be the case because if E1 belongs to type zero, then its, it's return value also belongs to type zero. Uh, so this should work, right? Or should it? Uh, actually, it doesn't quite. Because uh, if, we, if we look at the, this uh, bind term again, uh, we have the, the output of E1 is indeed in type zero, and so we will indeed erase it, uh, but, but the type system doesn't know it. You know? Uh, so it, it works if, t if the output type is a literal arrow, then if it's a literal arrow, then of course, it, the encoding will actually have say that it's an erased arrow, but if, for example, it's just a type variable, then the encoding is just a type variable, and so we don't actually know that this, this type will be erased. So in order to, to make, this, make this work, we have to kind of uh, weaken our, our bind. So instead of requiring that the output uh, results be an erased type, it should be basically any type, so long as it comes with a proof that it's erased. So we kind of uh, take inspiration from the color of the model T cars. So here's the, the new axioms. Uh, the bind has slightly changed, as you can see. Now the result type is not an erased T2, but just any T2, as long as it comes with a proof that this T2 is indeed erased, which means that we need to add uh, more, more axioms to actually uh, build those uh, erasure proofs, those uh, easy raised proofs. Uh, notice that we have a constructor for easy raised, but we don't have the, the eliminator co that corresponds uh, to it. And this is because the, the elimination, you know, conceptually at least, happens within the bind. And so since we don't actually define bind, the prime doesn't appear here. Uh, same thing for the pairs. We need, we need pairs to actually put the, the proof and the value together but we don't actually have the, the second projection because similarly the second projection happens within, within the bind which we don't actually define here. Okay, so here's the new translation. It's basically the same as before. Uh, you see here at the bottom in the, the, the translation for the lambdas, we basically translate uh, impredictive lambdas to erased lambdas together with the proof that their type is erased. So that's, that's the, the, the only real change. Uh, the other actually more significant change, which took, took me a while to, to figure out uh, for, for some idiotic reason, uh, is actually at, at the top where we need to distinguish the encoding of terms from the encoding of types. Uh, I guess if I had used a, a Tosky style universe, it would have come more, more naturally, but here I am. Uh, of course, now that we have new axioms, we need to make sure that we can still encode them into ICC Omega in the same way as before, or, or use some other way to translate it, but in this case, we can just encode them just as before. So we can basically define uh, all those axioms in a very straightforward way. And actually, the, the bind, the way we define bind, it doesn't actually look at the proofs of easy raised, so we, don't, we can represent easy raised by just a unit type, 
And we don't even need to define the second projection uh, either because yeah, our pairs are, are, are kind of silly. Uh, it's not the only encoding possible, but this one actually works. Okay, so this actually gives us a mapping that goes back and forth. And, and so we have at least a, a particular case where we've so, shown equivalence between prop and resizing axiom. Uh, now, how do those systems compare to the, the systems we actually do care about? Uh, on the size, side of, of prop, uh, our ICC omega is, is fairly stand, standard with just some, uh, some slight difference that's not really worth going into. Uh, on the RCC omega side, there, the difference is a bit more significant. Uh, so we, we have, as, we, as I said earlier, we have conflated propositional resizing and the, the actual truncation. Uh, so we actually have uh, axioms which are slightly weaker than, uh, than the ones of, uh, of, of uh, homotopy type theory. Uh, I guess one of the main differences that, uh, is this uh, easy race. So we can only, uh, only reduce or only resize terms which are actually erased instead of uh, any term which we can prove to be, uh, to be uh, proof irrelevant. Okay, so... Uh, from there, how does the system extend to more uh, realistic languages? Uh, we can start by trying to add eta to, those, uh, to the rules we had. And so if we add eta to RCC omega, then of course we need to add eta to ICC omega, and there's uh, not much to say there. But on the way back, uh, that's uh, a bit more delicate. So if we try to add eta to ICC omega, then when you try to prove that the encoding still also uh, is, uh, is convertible, then I'll, I'll spare you the details, but basically you need to add various rules to, to RCC Omega. First, you need, we need to show, to, we need to have a, a, a rule that says that eta equivalence of, on pairs holds, which I guess is, uh, is easy enough. Uh, we need to show that uh, easy raised is definitionally proof irrelevant. Um, okay, maybe I can live with this. Um, and we need to show this kind of equivalence here which I guess if you, if you look at it uh, in, in, enough, uh, you can convince yourself that it's some kind of eta equivalence for binds, but yeah, I don't know, I'm not very comfortable with this. Then things get more interesting when we try to say that, well, we added those rules to RCC omega, so we need to add their encoding into, into ICC omega. And that bring a, brings us to this rule here at the bottom, which is basically another kind of Eta rule on, on double negation, I, I, I guess, or something like this, which maybe we can prove by parametricity. In any case, uh, if we add this rule, then of course we add, need to add yet another rule to RCC omega, and, uh, and it, you know, it, it gets even, uh, yeah, you get this kind of crap just squared. So, so I think this is trying to tell me something, but I have no idea what. Okay, uh, another extension is uh, trying to add uh, inductive types. So as long as the inductive types live in the higher universes, there's really nothing to say here. They just translate it straight uh, in, a, in an immediate, immediate way. So basically we can, we can have something like UTT as, uh, as language and, and the equivalence between the, the two sides uh, works fine. Uh, if we try to encode, to, if we try to add inductive types in the type zero universe, uh, when we try to encode RCC omega terms to ICC omega terms, then, uh, well, basically the difference is, uh, the, the problem is what happens with uh, those terms which are not erasable in, uh, in th that, th you know, that are small but not erasable. So, so when we try to encode them in ICC omega, we will not be able to encode them because of the, the restriction we have on strong elimination. So we have to restrict the set of, of uh, inductive types we allow on the RCC omega side in order for them to fit in ICC omega. Um, I think this is fairly, fairly important in, in, in terms of how the two really relate, but other than that, the translation is, is actually straightforward. Um, more delicate when you try to translate terms in ICC omega back to RCC omega. So where, you know, how, do we, how do we deal with inductive types when we try to erase them, because for those which live in type zero, of course they need to be erased, since we're trying to erase everything that's in type zero. And if they're erased, that means we can't actually easily do strong elimination. 
So that, that's, uh, that's the main problem. There are a few other problems that, that show up, such as the fact that the, uh, an erase type needs to be considered as, as, as positive. So it needs to be a, a positive uh, uh, occurrence. And with our current double negation encoding of, uh, of the erasure, this is actually not the case. Of course, now that we have inductive types, we can actually use another encoding. Instead of double negation, we can encode it into, a, into an inductive, inductive type, which then is, uh, does satisfy the positivity. So we, we do have a solution here. And of course, there are also some, some details to, to deal with in order for the termination check to, to, be, to be satisfied. So uh, to get a bit more into details with what happens with strong elimination, uh, we see, so let's say we have an, a term E in type 0. So it's an inductive type in type 0. So we erased it, presumably. And we try to, to do elimination on it, a strong elimination on it. So we try to compute a term in a higher universe. Uh, that means that because it's in a higher universe, we actually did not erase, do not erase those terms. And so the bind actually will not, you know, will not accept, will not type check because the output is not erased. We can work around this for, for some particular cases, most importantly for the case where E is actually just a very plain tuple. And so instead of basically using elimination on the whole tuple, uh, we can basically project each one of the fields separately. And then, and then basically reify the tuple, uh, uh, and and then do the normal elimination on it. But that doesn't generalize to more interesting cases. So it doesn't ha handle uh, dependent tuples or you know inductive index types like the equality that we care about. So the other solution is uh, is that we actually going to to use the fact that we still had some wiggle room on the the resizing axiom si side where we our resizing axiom was actually a bit weaker than what we had in, uh, in, uh, in, the, in homotopic type theory. So we're going to, to weaken the is erased to match is prop uh, so, that, so that we can actually build other proofs that something is erased. This way, we can basically say that if we have a small inductive type, so, so a type made up only of type 0 elements, which are themselves all erased, and we construct it with a single constructor inductive, then we can show that it's still erased, basically, without actually erasing it. Uh, of course, for the other uh, type 0 uh, inductives, such as large inductives or, or multi-constructed inductives, we can't use this, so we still have to erase them. So it makes the translation a bit more, more complex. And it means that our RCC omega side is, has gotten yet a bit closer to, um, to the actual uh, uh, resizing axiom. OK, so I've, I've shown some equivalence between some form of, of uh, a prop universe and some form of resizing axioms. Uh, this doesn't actually include eta. Uh, it, it's, it can be extended to, to at, at least UTT style inductive types. The case for generalized inductive types in prop is, is actually still work in progress. There are still some, some uh, loose ends to, 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 to solve. Uh, notice that the the round trip is not the identity function. So we have uh, propositional equivalence, maybe, but, but definitely not an isomorphism. And uh, I thought everyone's intuition was that prop and resizing are equivalent, but apparently that's not the case. So, all right, this is it. Thank you very much. Have you considered the interaction with universe polymorphism? Uh, no, I, I haven't tried to look into that at all. I, I don't foresee any significant uh, issue other than the fact that the universe polymorphism does, cannot include prop. So we're going to have some trouble there. But I was asking because your translation is depending on the fact that you're in type 0 or type something else, so then Exactly. As you can instantiate variable, you, you don't know how to translate. Okay. Yes. Yeah. One one option I tried to look at is is actually to to translate the basically type zero etc in RCC omega to type one and above in ICC omega, as as the, the more straightforward translation, except for the actual encoding of axioms, which would actually handle the the uh, universe polymorphism in a straightforward way. I I, I believe, but. 
and that, that, that hasn't worked out so far, so. Hey, uh, you were saying that um, you need to restrict the inductive type. Which inductive type can you uh, keep for the moment? Because I think I've seen like without multiple constructors. <coughs> so does it mean you don't have NAT and list? Uh, no, so so far what I what I think can work is to have inductive types which are similar to those of prop, also on the side of uh, of RCC omega. So basically, I can I can have uh, I, I mean what what I don't what I does not work is is basically UTT. So any uni, any inductive type you like, but just at higher universes. Within prop zero, uh, I can easily handle the case where you only have tuples, so that's, that's, very, that's very easy. Uh, but for, for more general cases, I basically have to have a restriction similar to, to what we have in, in Cox prop. So you can't have strong elimination for, for large types or, or for multi-constructed types. But you can still define them, you just can't have strong elimination for them. And you can still use them to some extent. So that, that includes ACC, accessibility then? Yes. Yeah. Any more questions? So can you say something about this round trip for the beta case? So is it, do you, what you, do you get propositional equality? Or well, actually, what kind the, of weak equality do you get when you go around? The, when you go around, you end up keeping the double negation for, for some of the terms. So the type is even different. And it, it, really, it really is completely different. So it's definitely not an identity it would have to be a different kind of encoding on one of the ways. And so probably a, a more if complex encoding. If you have encoding. univalence or something? Sorry? If you have univalence, can't you somehow? Maybe with univalence you can recover it, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Though okay. there would probably still only be, you know, uh, propositionally equal, so yeah. not, not definitionally equal. If there are no more questions, then let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.